Hello and welcome to the Rousseau Golf Academy in Harbour in Buckinghamshire today. It gives me great pleasure to introduce a very dear friend of mine, Dr. Noel Rousseau. So Noel and I really discussed today the subject of, of automaticity and really how can we release that kind of handbrake in many ways to our thinking. So really our thoughts don't constrain how we move within the golf scene. So no, welcome and thank you so much for really sharing your experiences around these subjects today. Brilliant. Thank, thank you, Mark. And as and as you know, this was this was the topic of my um, of my PhD. This was eight years work and in really kind of exploring the idea of automaticity. And uh, let me explain what what that word really means. Um, when I when when I was when I was playing and when I was younger, um, I went to see a, a really good coach, and he looked at me and he said, "No." You couldn't be this bad if you tried, um, um, but I didn't know. I wasn't. I wasn't upset. I knew what he meant. I was moving really slowly and badly and poorly. I had so much thinking going on in my mind. Um, there's no way I could ever move fluidly and athletically. He also called me rigor mortis Russo for as long as I knew him. It was a bit, a bit unkind. But then um, I was introduced to a, to a drill, and it's a drill that um, that I, I, I tested, and an intervention that I tested through the through the research, and one that I'll, I'll share with you today, which was just completely liber completely liberating. Uh, it has absolutely transformed the way that some players move, and it has uh, had no effect on others. But I think it's something that uh, that you would uh, you would be worth trying. Uh, it's brilliant fun, and as I say, it can have an enormous impact on how people move. So the idea is, of course, um, and we, we all know what it's like when we're, when, we're not, when we're playing our best and we're not thinking about our swing, things seem to be fluid and, and, you know, and our, best, uh, our best performances come out. That isn't always the case, but we, we also know what it's like when we're, we're really thinking about our swing. We've got these deep internal thoughts about knees and hips and shaft and positions, and uh, you know, that can be really clunky and difficult. And, and you will know what it's like when you have a student like that in front of you. I mean, it even looks awkward, doesn't it? Um, is there a better, more athletic mover um, inside? And often there is, and taking away some of that thought and letting people move more intuitively, intuitively um, can really, as I say, be liberating. So let me, um, let me show you the drill um, and we'll see if you can adapt to it. It takes a little bit of learning uh, and then perhaps you can give us some feedback. And I must say, Mark has never done this drill, so to my knowledge, um, um, this is the first time. So you are seeing it, seeing it play out live. Um, okay, Mark, uh, would you mind coming over this way while I just, just demonstrate how this works? It's called the, uh, it's called the flow drill. Um, and I learned it way back when I was working for the Cranfield Golf, Golf Academy. So I've got to give credit to, to Scott Cranfield for this. Uh, I'm not sure where he got it. Okay, and the, and the drill works like this. Um, you start from behind the ball, get your grip sorted so there's less kind of faffing around when you get to the ball. And then you're going to walk in, plant your feet, and then the moment the club hits the floor, you're going to go ahead and swing and hit. It's like Happy Gilmore, but it's not Happy Gilmore. This is not, not a run-up mark, okay? The deal is um, you're going to walk in in a kind of fluid flowing manner and in the same kind of fluid flowing manner go ahead and hit. We're trying to reduce as much swing thought as, as possible. If you do this exercise and try and think about everything you know about the golf swing, um, you're probably going to fall on your face. You've got to clear all that out, put your feet down and hit it. You want to give it a go? Absolutely yes. Okay. <clears throat> Absolutely yes. Right. So I mean, I would I would probably pre uh, uh, kind of preframe this and just ask the player to explore what happens, so that they haven't got expectations of fireworks going off and you know and immediately hitting it uh, amazingly well. Although they might, I would expect things to start happening after ball. I don't know five or six. So just explore what that feels like initially, Mark. <clears throat> to walk in, put the club down, and hit. Okay, for the record, that is nailed straight down the range, but I mean, that doesn't always happen. Um, and as you, as, you, um, as you keep repeating that, I want you to, to try and feel more and more kind of flow in your, in your approach uh, and try and make the, feel, the, the swing feel kind of like the way that you walked in. So you're kind of getting a, a rhythmical cue from the way you walk. <clears throat> okay. Very good. So for that, for the record, I mean, Mark has just nailed three balls straight down the middle, but that, that doesn't always happen. I wouldn't expect that to happen. It's not a magic trick. Um, I'm more interested in, in, in hearing Mark's feedback on, how, on his experience of hitting and, and to try and draw out how he felt he moved um, different, if at all. 
I think really my experience there, Noel, was it kind of removed thought, but actually allowed me to keep one very dominant thought. So I guess we could look at it kind of two ways, is knowing which thoughts to keep, which thoughts to remove. Okay. And so really my experience was, it made it certainly very precise and very defined at the beginning, as far as once I'm addressing the ball, my priority is what, uh, by actually reducing the kind of time in some ways, or the expectation to think, uh, really allowed me to be a lot more precise on actually producing that movement. So um, invariably when I play, like a lot of us, we get constrained by our thinking, uh, becomes that kind of huge break on our system. That... Back to too many positions and, and ideas and concepts. Massively, and that, that was certainly my experience, you know, certainly as a, as a younger player around p achieving P1, P2, P3, which I think many of us have been exposed to. So really my initial experience there was that by having al almost removing time, and I think that even connects back to the idea of 3D, it's actually a four-dimensional movement we have, you know, the, the fourth dimension being time. By taking that time away, it gave me a very clear, um, very intuitive, very automated again, to actually hit the golf ball, I have to do what? And that really was my experience. So it removed a lot of thought, but it also gave me a very defined thought around to actually move well. Uh, the priority is what? And I've only got, in essence, half a second to think about it. Yeah, yeah. So, so there, was, there was some swing thought then, one, one sort of dominant idea. Um, so on, on a scale of one to 10, um, 10 being loads of thinking, how much would you, do you think you were taking part in while hitting? I actually had most of my thought walking in. Okay, so most of my actual thought process was when I actually get to, to address the ball, in essence, what do I do? So certainly my experience there was it'd be interesting to see when you have your experience doing this. For me, most of the thought actually happened walking into the ball. So while you were swinging on a scale of one to 10? A, a best one. It really was how do I, at best it was how do I start backswing? And you will find as you, as you do the drill, you will be able to, um, to, to have more swing thoughts, but they, need to, they, they will be of a, a fairly sort of broad nature. You won't be able to think about positions and all the stuff that kind of constrains us. So I wonder if, if we ask you to hit two or three more and I ask you to make the most athletic swing you can do, I wonder what that means to you. So we'll, we'll use the flow drill and we'll see if Mark can be even more kind of expressive and, and athletic, which of course is a, a long way away from kind of how we learn the game. Okay, Mark, show me what a really athletic and fluid swing looks like. Incredible, very good. Okay. And again, and on, sorry, on a, scale, on a scale of one to 10 on athleticism and um, you know, fluid movement, what would you give that one? Four. Four, okay, show me what, uh, show me what an eight looks like. Okay. What would need to happen to get to an eight? <laughs> now in my, in, in my view, Mark seems to be moving better. I might, I might be biased. We'd need the, we need the 3D data on that. Um, he's still nailing it straight down the middle. He's moving, in my mind, faster. Um, what, what number do you think that was? That was certainly closer to eight, maybe a six or seven. So again, with time, exploring this perhaps at home, I would be pretty happy I can get to an eight. But um, interestingly, you didn't, you know, as you, as you moved faster and more fluidly and carefree, would you say it was carefree? You didn't all of a sudden start spraying it around the, around the golf course, did you? I mean, I kind of look at that two ways. The accuracy of flight was pretty much as it was, but one of the, we look at distance as a very popular discussion, certainly in kind of contemporary golf, that one of the, the most realistic ways of actually gaining length is actually have a slightly faster backswing. That really connects into the kinetics, how much force he applies for the hands into the handle and transition. So my actual, again, very intuitive response was that by really following Noel's instructions, have actually let me go quicker in the backswing, which we know through much research, that typically slightly quicker backswings can actually then help us apply those brakes faster in transition. So the more force the hands apply in transition can then correlate back to increased clubhead speed. It was more athletic. It was faster and more fluid. And that is, that is the um, anatomical view. Um, brilliant. Um, and from a, a more uh, psychological view on my studio, uh, I'm gonna get it on a sign, is the, is the phrase to gain control, give up control, um, which obviously isn't always the case. But in that case, Mark's moving more fluidly, more athletically, more carefree, and he's hitting it straighter. And in my mind, moving better. Now, that drill isn't for, isn't for everybody. Always don't try and really force it if it's not working. There are reasons it doesn't work for everybody, um, which, we, we, which we won't go into. It's also really useful when people get stuck at the ball. So when, when, and when people get the yips. So the yips happen with the, with the full swing. You know, people get stuck at certain positions that, they, that, that they've overthought. People get stuck at the ball. I know I, know I had, a, had a spate of that in my, in my younger days. So when people can't kind of take the club away, 
um, going through that drill is just brilliant because there's no actual start to the swing. It's one kind of um, fluid process. So be creative. And if you need to circumvent some kind of thought block, that drill is just um, liberating is the word. If you've enjoyed this video, then please click subscribe and I'll keep you up to date with more coaching information. And if you really want to take your game to the next level, then please visit my website, golfcoach.online, where you'll see there my subscription channel, which is Golf Coach Access, which is all about building a golf coaching and education community and having really structured long-term programs. And the best thing is you can get immediate free access.